Well, let's welcome in some, uh, you know, technical perspective now. Atul Suri is a market master of the day. He's CEO, Marathon Trends, PMS. He's joining us now uh, on the program. Atul, good morning. Great to have you with us here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, Prashant here. Uh, where are we now, Atul, in terms of uh, the market picture? This, this seasonality going into the election uh, has been talked about widely. It's well advertised. So are we entering a bit of a, a side, sideways, even corrective phase for global markets, U.S. especially? And if the answer to that is yes, what does that mean for India here? Because so far, not, not very much has mattered. I mean, we've continued our up move. Yeah, I know that uh, we are you know, speaking on a day when uh, markets are down globally. So obviously the mood and questioning is different. But it's nice to take a step back. And you know, if we look at markets in a little bigger time frame, with, the, with, the, with a broader brush stroke. Essentially, there are four global asset classes, and I'll cover each one of them to understand where we are. The first is global equities. Again, barring yesterday's move, uh, global markets are at lifetime highs. It's not just India, but even if you find the US is nudging there, a lot of global markets are at lifetime highs. So a 1% move or 2% really doesn't say much. So the first thing is that the quadrant that we like to focus on, which is global equities, they are globally pushing towards lifetime highs. Number two is commodities. Uh, if you look at commodities, it was a very big concern. Inflation was a very big concern in 2021, 22, 23. And if you find that even commodity prices are much softer than where they were two years ago. So that whole issue of inflation, which was you know dominating us, also comes uh, under the lid. The third asset class, which I think is very important and relevant, is U.S. bond yields. And you'll find that uh, there has been a decline in U.S. bond yields. And going ahead, there is a feeling that the Fed is going to cut. And fourth is currencies. If you look at the U.S. dollar, you look at the DXY, which is around 100. So what really happens is, Prashant, dare I say on a day when the markets are down, that actually most of the the places that the right thing is at the right place so all the quadrants are actually behaving out pretty good on a larger or a macro scale now the issue that comes up is yes there can be volatility in the short run uh, september is seasonally known to be a volatile month and for that i think uh, it is going to be a reality we will have to live with it but as far as the bigger picture goes the four asset classes that i mentioned and there is a lot of correlation or overlap that happens as i said i'm not speaking for one day or one week or one month but if you look at the bigger macros, dare I say the world has enjoyed a Goldilocks. You know, in and that sense that. of the term, a Goldilocks is when most things are where they ought to be. Yes, it will never be uh, perfect alignment at all points in time. Things will swing just as inflation dominated and recession fears are there. But overall, I don't think there are any very, very big issues. The point where I would be concerned as far as markets go whether it's globally or India, would be that if we break the August lows. Remember, August was a very volatile one when you had a yen carry trade issue. And again, there was some data and there was a fear of a recession. So US had corrected almost 8.5%, 9%. Japan was much sharper. India corrected about 4 to 5%. So for me, the reference point for this volatility or for the month is all is well till we don't break August lows. Yes, if we break August lows, uh, then we need to get back to the drawing board and reconsider things. So yes, volatility is there. September has been historically volatile. But the bigger picture, the bigger asset class plays uh, seem okay to me. And uh, that's very well explained, uh, all the four quadrants, as you put it, Atul. But would you want to put odds to it? What are the, what are the, what's the chance, what's the likelihood of that happening, the, uh, the getting back to the August lows at some point over the next couple of months? I, for one, would give it a higher probability that we'll break out on the upside. Yes, okay. volatility will remain and it will give us panic. But I do think that global markets have a good 5 to 7% or maybe 8 to 10% higher uh, from where we are. And that goes for India also. So I do think that breakouts were made earlier. Those targets have yet to be achieved. The, tar the journey can never be linear. It can never be a straight line. It has to be volatile. And what we are seeing is part of that volatility. So I think it's something you will have to live with. What I'm noticing, Prashant, and which is more relevant, is that in the last two months or so, more so I would say post-elections, the behavior of sectorial churn is very evident to me in India. And I think for me, I'm not taking cash calls, 
But for me as an investor, as a portfolio manager, what is changing is that the sector of themes that were leading the market, I feel are changing. And that may be a time to recalibrate and move some things around. Mm. I was just going to come to that. Adul, this is, this is really interesting. I keep going back to your line, right? Uh, the trend is your friend until it bends. And it's not bending from what you're saying. We're not at the point of bend, uh, at least as of now. Uh, you're saying probably higher chances of a breakout on the upside than on the downside. So when now with the overall market context uh, quite clear to us, let's talk about the changes that one may need to make to their uh, portfolio in here. I mean, it, it's been all about CapEx stocks, uh, manufacturing, defense, railways, all of that. Uh, do you see anything changing there? Uh, and then we've, have a, we've had a lot of false starts on uh, things like, you know, large banks or even FMCG. Every day there's a, I mean, every time there's a scare in the market, we see uh, some of these FMCG names do well and then they fall by the wayside again. Any changes that you uh, forecast here? Yeah, so that's exactly the point I was uh, talking to earlier. That uh, in the last two to three months, what I find is that certain sectors or themes that dominated the markets for two years, three years, have started underperforming and some sectors have really taken the bull by the horn. So let me name them. Uh, I feel that the sectors like, uh, there are three sectors that really stand out to me which have done very well. One is pharma. Uh, I think pharma is one sector which has been pretty much ignored by the market. It's been laid by the wayside, but there are a lot of pharma stocks and it's a very large sector in India. So I find that a lot of pharma stocks seem to be making new highs. And that's very, very positive because they are bucking the overall trend. The second sector, which again is a very important sector, probably the second largest sector in India is IT. Uh, I also feel that uh, I know that there is volatility today because of NASDAQ, etc. But on a larger theme, I see a lot of IT stocks breaking out. And I feel that that sector or that theme also is playing out very well. Again, something that has underperformed for the last two to three years. The third sector, which I find again interesting, is the whole consumption space. And this is where your FMCG and consumption stocks come in. So to some extent, I get a feeling that the market is little moving towards defensive, things like pharma and FMCG. And yes, to offset that, you realize that some of the industrials have started cooling off a wee bit. Mind you, they've had a three-year bull market. So in the last two to three months, we are seeing industrials a little bit cool off. So I think that's where the, the 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 point that comes for me as a fund manager is that do we need to change because the trend we feel in leadership is changing and we are doing that because we find some of these places like pharma and IT giving us very, very good opportunities and breakouts. And this is evident also if you look at some sectors which are divided. The most important sector in India is banking, right? You'll find that PSU banks dominated the whole banking space. They were the sector, that are the stocks that did well for the last, again, two to three years. But you'll find that financials are actually doing very well. Mm. So a lot of money is moving into your broking stocks, AMC stocks, insurance stocks, etc. So I find that there's a shift that is happening even within sectors because we term banks and financials in one breath. But I feel banks are behaving separately and financials are behaving separately. So these are the kind of shifts that I'm seeing in the market in the last few months. All right. Hi, Atul. Uh, good morning and always good to morning. see you in. Uh, Atul, just to clear the point on the headline index, that's an FT. If we hold those August lows, then we could possibly trend up 8 to 10% even from these levels? I think so. Because I, if, if memory serves me right, it was around 23,900, yes. uh, which should be around 5% or so lower from here. So I feel you will have to give the market some space to play. And as Prashant pointed out earlier, that seasonally September has been a volatile month. And uh, one has to be prepared for that. But as I said, the key thing, Nigel, is in my view, not going to be the market per se. It's going to be more the sectors and themes. Because in these yeah. times of churns, what you will find is that new leadership emerges. And I feel that after two to three years of a secular trend, especially like the PSUs for that matter, We'll find that there could there could be a shift that is happening here. Okay, all right. Uh, got that out of the way. Personally, September is a good month for me, but as you're saying, seasonally for the markets, it's not uh, great. So we'll keep that aside. Let's focus on a couple of other trends then. Crude oil prices uh, being lower, a good thing from an India market perspective. And we have a couple of sectors, themes that are doing well. Paints is doing well uh, today because of the lower crude prices, and that's been a rank underperforming sector. So first, your yeah. view on crude oil prices. We're holding at around $73 per barrel. 
which none of the nifty bulls are complaining but uh, where is it headed yeah, so i think for 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 brent to actually uh, you know come to around 70 would be a good place 70 has historically been a very big support uh, for uh, brent crude and i think that uh, brent is heading there uh, well if it breaks that then in fact i find sometimes that it may be in kind of a bit of a worry also because if commodities crack big time yes it may feel good in the short run some stocks may benefit but it may actually put a question mark on the overall health of the economy because you need commodities for growth you need commodities in a growing economy if commodities crack that clearly would imply that you know the world is heading to a different scene where recession or uh, underperformance in a lot of the other stocks will play out so for me commodities in a band currency in a band is always a good idea if it does too much it always creates a problem so as i said i'm very happy that crude where it is or even if it goes up to 70 so commodities as a whole as i said is something i watch very closely because it's very closely linked to inflation and remember, the last three years have been dominated by inflation. Yes, we are coming out of the fear, but it shouldn't be that they even swing the other side. Because if they swing too far on the other side, it would imply that the demand for commodities is out, which would imply that there is a problem where recession could be coming. So range-bound commodities, range-bound currencies is what I love. Mm. <clears throat> Got it. You know, uh, just uh, Atul, uh, do you think, uh, you know, it, it, globally as well, right? I mean, in the US, and you watch that market also pretty closely, we will, as you're saying, new leadership will emerge. We're at that point where uh, that market also will do that. I'm asking because the outsized importance, right? Five stocks, these large tech stocks, is about 30% of the S&P market cap. Uh, in fact, Vishant, sorry, the big one. To, it's all reduced to one stock. NVIDIA. NVIDIA. And exactly. <laughs> so I was coming to that. NVIDIA, uh, as of yesterday's 9.5 to yesterday's 9.5% cut, is if 20% is the cutoff for a bear market, it's down 23% from its June highs. You know, so are we are we at that Prashant point in the went, US it, as well? Went, NVIDIA went yeah. into a bear market last month also. And again, it made a it, new high. So, so but, yeah, these 20% these twenty percent rules in stocks like NVIDIA, 20% is good for an index level. But in stocks like NVIDIA and some of these tech stocks, it's a matter of one week. So yeah. <laughs> NVIDIA is a different. I mean, as I said that I have never seen, you know, we were talking about FANG stocks and Super 7, but I have never seen one stock actually dominate the market as much as, or the importance of one stock, which is NVIDIA, because it affects the whole sector, the whole semiconductor space. Yeah, but then these are realities, you know, you have to live with it, Prashant. You know, at all points in time. No, no, I completely names, agree. Uh, new acronyms. It's, <laughs> it, it has affected us well. It has helped. But the question yeah. is, it can hurt also, right? So, I mean, so, uh, any, any thoughts uh, at all? I mean, uh, if, I don't know if you've looked at it closely or... I, uh, I have, I have. I, have. I mean, actually, I, if you look I at the S&P chart or the NVIDIA chart, I mean, I think it's the same. As you said, <laughs> it's the same thing now. Yeah, I know. It, it has a lot of domination. But as I said, that, you know, when a stock moves in that percentages, you have to give it that big ranges also. Like a 3%, 5%, 10% NVIDIA is no big deal because the stock also goes up 50, 70% uh, in a few months. So I feel that that is not an issue. You'll have to look at that stock in its own way. But coming to the bigger question that as far as US goes, uh, I feel that there is immense amount of breadth. The way some of the small caps have started doing well, the Russells, etc. also give you a lot of confidence. So I think that there's a lot more depth, a lot more strength in that market, in that economy. One day, I mean, is not doesn't doesn't there's an end of bull market i feel that the bull market has a lot of legs okay all right atul uh, appreciate you joining in thanks a lot uh, for joining and giving us your view and we'll keep that in mind trend is your friend till it doesn't bend so uh we'll hold on to that thought and looking forward to chatting up with you soon well let's how do you focus know where on it bends? how do you know where it bends <laughs> then you'll join us next time and tell us that right <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's, right. that's the challenge have a good day, Atul, and see you for a walk later in the evening sometime around in Bandra. Take care. Thank Thanks a lot. Well, let's move on.